So if you watch film essays like these a lot, then you've probably heard a lot about how visual comedy is something of a lost art nowadays. So many modern mainstream films are really just scenes of people standing around improv at each other. And that's not a bad thing in itself, it's just kind of a wasted opportunity. And while there are a ton of great filmmakers whose comedy is totally worth your time studying, I want to hone in on one of my personal favorites, Jacques Tati, and look at the places where he found visual comedy. First up, props. Whether they're inappropriate, slightly creepy, or just plain ludicrous, a good prop by itself can nearly always get you a solid laugh. However, what really matters, though, is what you do with what you have. Because anybody can just hold up some funny little whatever in front of the camera. The real test is whether or not you can take one or two completely normal, everyday boring things and find a gag with them. And a lot of times, the easiest way to do that is to make that prop a problem for the character to solve. Find a way for it to prevent the character from doing whatever it is they need to do. Like running a functional restaurant. Or not ruining the customer's clothes. Or escaping in the middle of the night. Or, to take it to the simplest level, what'll interrupt them from getting from point A to point B? And you can even take that literally, put an object right smack dab in between the character and their objective. This way of thinking, of taking full advantage of both the objects and the world around you, is inherently rooted in silent cinema. And it leads to some of Tati's greatest gags. But I guess I really shouldn't call them gags. Like all the silent greats, moments like these aren't so much about laughing at a punchline, but being amazed at a feat at the imagination, at the fact that it's all real, or that it seems real. And part of that amazement has everything to do with discipline. Try and imagine just how many takes this took to get just right. And to be honest, I think that's kind of the saddest thing about modern comedies. Sure, one-liners may be funny, but where's this kind of precision? And for as much as that's true for what we see, it's also true for what we hear. Consider this gag. It's gotta be worth what, 10, 15,000? Oh, I blew it. Not that funny, right? So how do we improve it? <laughs> That's more like it. See, what really sells the gag isn't the cloud of cocaine, it's the sneeze. It's the sound. 10, 15, sure, there's the 000. sound of the box hitting the floor here, but in oh, a way it's too it. simple. This is exaggerated. <laughs> And that's the key. The way that Tati used sound was really unique and like no other filmmaker and deserves entire essays on its own, but one of the main things he used it for was enhancing gags. Again, think about what's really selling the laugh. Is it the action, the character's reaction, or is it the sound? There's also a certain tangible quality that sound can bring to a picture. It has this ability to bring life and even personality to an object or a location. And in that personality, you can find humor. Beyond props and sound though, there's something far more fundamental at the heart of Tati's comedy. He liked to claim that this little one-minute short made just a few years after the birth of cinema taught him everything he knew about screen comedy. And while it may seem odd, it actually provides an invaluable lesson. Movement, or rather, exaggerated movement, can be amazing. Like so many of those early greats, Tati came from a vaudeville world of clowns and acrobats and magicians where he was first trained as a mime artist, an art based entirely in exaggeration. And obviously, if you're going to exaggerate something, you first have to have that something. And that starts with something very simple. Observation. 
when you observe a, a policeman uh, here in London, you, I, sh I show it to you. When you have a, an English policeman, he is really, he, he's in duty first. So, Uh, you, you know that it's here, you see, I mean, you should, then... Moi, j'ai cru que, justement, c'était un apport nouveau que de styliser, de... de faire en sorte que on s'aperçoive des choses humoristiques qui nous entourent. But the French is absolutely different. <laughs> so much of the humor Tati finds is all about this, about behavior and nuance and the mundane things in life. personal favorite of mine, the way that people act during a traffic jam. Okay, so we've got props, sound, and observation. Now let's build a gag. Sometimes it's as simple as setting up an idea and then doing the opposite for the punchline. That one may have seemed a little obvious, but watch this. There's the setup. And then our expectations are turned upside down. The gag doesn't work logically, but it's not really supposed to. The point is that it works visually. And that's where simple camera tricks can come in. So you and the character may think you see something from one angle, but when you switch to the other, it's not quite what you thought it was. You can get a laugh from a reverse shot, or even a reveal. Some gags play better in a single moment, but others need time, and there's a very simple way of getting around that. This is one of the methods Tati was so brilliant at. Set up a situation, cut away for a moment, and then bring it back. Think about it, this wouldn't have anywhere near the impact that it does if it was all done in one shot. The gag needs space and time enough for the audience to forget about the setup. So that the punchline can hit all the harder. For me, at least, these are easily the most memorable and playful of all of Tati's gags. Because, of course, you don't actually forget about the setup. You may for a moment, but when that punchline hits, you instantly remember, and often that's half the fun watching and thinking, oh my gosh, I nearly forgot about that. So if you want to get a laugh from something other than a bunch of SNL alums standing around one up each other with one-liners, remember, objects, sound. Reverse our expectations, set it up, bring it back.
But all of that starts with observation. Because sometimes the smallest thing can be the absolute funniest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, la, 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 la.